ask everyone to kindly keep your mobiles in silent mode. Everyone, please keep your mobiles in silent mode. So, uh, I'm sure all of you sitting here would have seen an ankle sprain. And there's no optic surgeon who wouldn't have seen in a near one or a dear one or a patient without an ankle sprain. So, that's the most commonest thing, like a backache for a foot and ankle surgeon, we see ankle sprains aplenty. What are ankle sprain? What is this which we are spraining? The spraining is, uh, can I have the slides coming in please? So, uh, what is the, 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 what are the ligaments that forms the, the ankle ligament, the lateral ankle uh, ligaments? As uh, in the clinical examination, Dr. Rajiv Shah was showing in the morning, we have to look at the ankle lateral aspect. And when you look at the lateral aspect, you should know what you're looking at. And you're looking at this ligaments which are the, can I have the pointer, the anterior talofibular ligament and the calcaneofibular ligament. So, these are the two ligaments which are forming the lateral ligaments of our ankle and these are the important ligaments and these are the ones which get sprained when your foot goes into the inversion area. There are other things that, other than the static ligaments, they are the ankle stabilizers, that those are the peroneal muscles. They are the dynamic stabilizers and they also help in the stability of the ankle. So, how do you examine? You have the anterior drawer test of the knee, I am sure all of you know that. Similar, we also have an anterior drawer test of the ankle. So, here you stabilize the hind foot and pull the tibia and if it is more than 5 millimeter then it is pathological but you always always should try this in the normal side because if you have a ligamentous laxity like an Ehler Donlos syndrome patients then they will be lax both the sides so you got to compare it with the normal side and go forward and see whether it is positive or not. You can do this Taylor tilt with the radiology wherein if you look at the tilting more than 15 degrees in the x-ray then it is mostly unstable ankle. So, these are the radiological views, the one other previous was the clinical examination. Clinically, this is where you have to look at. You got to look at the two points, just below the lateral malleolus, this is the CFL, the calcaneal fibula and just below and anterior to the lateral malleolus is the ATFL. So, this is a classical area. Most of the time you find the patients having a swelling around here following the injury. So, you have the different types of grading depending upon the an, uh, amount of injury and the most important part of the treatment is the rice treatment. So, I, uh, I have no problem explaining that to my South Indian fellows because we are all rice eaters. Well, so remember the rice. What is rice? R is… Have you… Can you guys say it out? Anybody? Great. So, you all know about it. I don't have to enumerate further. This is the first thing which you have to give. In India, I come from the Ayurvedic land, so we have this massages and hot fermentations and hot uh, areas. So, this is something which we have to avoid because this is an acute injury. Here, you want to calm down the soft tissue, you don't want to aggravate the problem. So, ice is a very important part and you have to educate the patient, please don't put hot water, hot fermentation in an acute injury. So, rice is something, ter therapy is a very paramount importance because you want to cool down 
all the inflammatory part. So that is what you got to do and give it to all your patients. Rehab is one most important part. So you got, depending upon the type of injury, the severity of injury, it might take from three weeks to 10 weeks, 12 weeks to completely recover. And most of the time it recovers and that is why ankle sprains are as the topic of the today is, is it crepe bandage alone? Because most of the time it recovers with good crepe bandage, good immobilization, good rehab. So the conservative management is most important, vast majority it is treated with conservative management and you have a whole lot of brands available with different shapes and size of banding and techniques so you can use many of them. For stable injuries like type 1 and type 2 you use it for 3 to 4 weeks maybe 6 weeks max but then if you have an athlete tell them to use these bands for a long time why especially while you train them for the proprioceptive exercises. Rehab phase the TheraBand usage is very important you got to use the TheraBand to get the proprioception band back. You got to in improve the range of motions and the wobble board exercises, especially when you're looking at a person who's in, into sports. So, reassess all your ankle patients at six weeks' time. Tell them to come back at six weeks and see whether they are happy. If they're happy, they'll not come back to you. But otherwise, they will just tell them, I would like to see you at six weeks because if they are not happy, they'll come back and you can reassess. And only at six weeks time, you got to look further, other than an x-ray, you got to look at an ultrasound or an MRI at six weeks and most of the patients are happy, 80% of them happy, literature wise, 20% are unhappy and they should be looked further. So you got to look at the mechanical instability. Now look at the ankle, uh, ankle problem. There can be a mechanical instability where there is a true rupture of the ligament. Or there can be a functional instability wherein there is a perceived problem rather than a tear. So you got to have both this together. So when both the is a problem, then you continue to have the recurrent ankle sprain but you got to identify which part of the problem is there. Is it a really a mechanical problem or a perceived functional insufficiency? Why it is important? Because if you don't take care of this ligament, then it leads to a arthritic changes of ankle over a period of 10 years and long-standing instability almost 78% leads to ankle arthritis. So it is important to assess the patient. It is not crepe bandage alone all the time. And that is the time when you do MRI, if you have a good MSK radiologist, you can do an ultrasound and look at the instability and then if necessary, you got to think about surgery. But before you go for surgery, as Dr. Rajiv Shah showed the patient. You got to see the patient from the knee downwards. You got to look at the patient completely. If you have a patient like this with a varus or with a, uh, a varus deformity in the ankle, then they're never going to heal with the conservative management. Or even if you do just do a, a ligamentous repair, it is not going to heal unless you treat the shape of the foot. So you got to look at the instability in a whole. So. Once you decided on the surgery, what are the dis different types of surgery? Can you do an open surgery, an arthroscopic surgery? Would you do an anatomical repair or a tenodesis repair? There are a whole lot of literature into the surgical part. The surgery which we always do is something called as a brostrum gold surgery. The brostrum surgery is the anatomical repair which restores the anatomy and the gold modification is you bring the extensor retinaculum into that repair and it, uh, it reinforces the ligament repair. So that is the, the brostrum gold sur uh, repair surgery. And the advantage is it's simple, uh, maintains the full range of motions and preserves the, preser uh, the, the other tendons. Cor contraindications are 
you have other deformities like varus heel, heavy athletes, it might tend to fail and the peroneals have to be strong enough here. So uh, the, the, the different literature, they did a study on, on, on the naval uh, officers and they found the brostrum gold, the anatomical repair worked well. This is a multicentric study between the tenodesis and the anatomic study and then again they found anatomic repair was very good. So the arthroscopy almost equivalent to an open repair in long term. So there's no advantages for an arthroscopy till now. So what is this brostrum gold repair? You have to, you, you might have to do an arthroscopy to see the scarring of the intra-articular because you're doing the surgery after about two to three months of injury. So there might be some scarring inside the ankle. So maybe you might need an arthroscopy at the ankle and then either you can use a J-shaped incision or a long incision here. I prefer to do this incision because I can see the peroneal tendons simultaneously. So this is how the surgery is done. You go in size and when you remove the fibrous scar, you can find actually this is where the tendon was and that is the defect here. You do something called as the Panton West type of suturing. You get the ATFL anatomically gotten and that's how you approximate and that's how it is post-surgery. And now I am trying to get this extensor retinaculum and bring it over the repair and that's the Gold's modification. And that is how the surgery is done. You can, if you don't have the tissues, you can use this large technique. We can f use the fiber tape and do this repair as well. And that's the, how the surgery is done after the closure. And so what are the problems? There are problems if the patients are obese, high impact athletes, there are problems. But these are the surgeon's problem I mean, the patient factors, something which as a surgeon you should know, don't do the surgery alone if you have a problem in the foot. So this is what Dr. Rajiv Shah was saying in the morning, peekaboo sign. If you look at the cavus foot, you are not supposed to see the, the big toe. So if you look from behind, when you look at the peak, uh, toe, big toe here, that means it's a cavus and a little bit of a varus foot. And if you don't do just the, the brostrum gold, it is definitely bound to fail. And here you have to correct the cavus and you got to uh, correct the varus by doing the osteotomy and then do a repair here and then you might end up well. So these are the tenodices wherein you use different types of uh, uh, tendons. I'm not going in detail that. So in conclusion, conservative management is of course the first choice. It's not exactly the crepe bandage alone, but you got to brace it up well. 80% of them heals well. 20% requires further treatment and that you have to assess at six weeks. You don't operate any ankle sprain, even in an athlete, day one. It always has to be six weeks plus. So I normally wait almost till about two and a half to three months before I think about surgery. So uh, that is what the dictum is. You should never operate. And here, with the first question Dr. Rajiv Shah asked Dr. Balwinder, is MRI important? When you take an MRI in day one, they will say ATFL sprain, CFL sprain. You don't have to look at it. You don't treat the MRI. Treat the patient, look at the injury, rehab them properly. Most of them recover well. If they don't, then think about surgery. And if you're thinking about surgery, anatomic reconstruction, or like the brostrum gold, is still the gold standard. You can use the other fiber wires if necessary. Thank you very much.